how to build your own high gain wireless antenna. It's called the Cantenna. What you need to do is find a can that's about five and a half inches long, three and a quarter wide, and I think mine was a chunky soup can, so decide on a good day to have a nice big bowl of soup. Go out and find one of these cans and eat the soup, clean up the can, and get to work on building your antenna. Okay, what you need, of course, the can. You'll need a antenna, wireless type antenna cable. My motherboard for my computer came with a cheap antenna. I just cut the antenna off of it. It has its own little SMA connector on it already. Another thing you need is a piece of copper. And that's the actual antenna element. And you need something to hold it straight up inside the can. Now some people go out and buy those fancy connectors and that that's good if you want to spend the money. I'm cheap so I'm just doing it this way, just taping it in there. Okay, so gather those items and start building the antenna. First you want to drill a hole in the can two and a half inches from the closed end, which is the back end here. Next you want to strip the insulation off the antenna wire to expose the shield conductor and the center conductor. Next take a, the piece of copper wire and solder it onto the end of the center conductor. Now for that copper wire you want it to be a solid copper about 18 gauge is fine, 16 gauge is fine. Um, cut it to about an inch and a quarter, solder it on to the end of the center conductor. Next you want to stick that through the hole in the can. Now you want to solder the, the shield, the braided shield conductor to the side of the can. You must make that real close to the hole because any extra length will tend to unbalance the antenna. You're dealing with the 2.4 gigahertz signal so the wavelength is very small and you don't want to have any extra lengths of wire sticking out. So get that as close to the hole as possible and of course before that you want to get that center conductor with the copper wire stuck up through that hole. Next you need to hold this in position. What I did, I used a, a piece of acrylic, drilled a hole in the center and stuck it up. It's very important that that stays straight up inside that antenna. Then I just taped the piece of acrylic down. You can use a piece of wood. Just make sure it's a dry piece of wood. And epoxy it or whatever into the antenna here, into the can. So it just holds it up. Now, it's better if you get one of those connectors and make it, it look more professional, but like I said, I'm cheap. I don't want to spend any money on this other than buying the can of soup. You know, it didn't cost me anything because I already had the other components. Okay, so I don't know if you can get a good look inside there. See what I did. Finally, test it out. When you hook it up, you want to take a piece of paper and find out how long this piece of wire is inside. Because you soldered it on to the end of that wire, it might end up being a little bit longer. So you might find your signals not that good. So using a piece of wire to, or a piece of paper and sticking in there and just marking where the bottom to the top is, then measure that and then you can trim the antenna down 
So it needs to be from the edge of the can to the very tip 1.2 inches. So that's important because it has to match the wavelength of your signal. And that'll be close enough. Okay. Some tips on using the antenna. Um, it really should be near a window. If you're trying to get a signal from outside, put it near a window. Make sure the screen is not in the way of the signal because some of the metal mesh screens will block the signal entirely. Another tip is to get the antenna as high as possible because as closer to the ground there's more objects to block the signal. So if you're trying to get a signal from 1200 feet away or whatever any bushes or trees or things in the path will attenuate that signal. Another tip is the antenna cable should not be any more than three feet long because the high frequency is attenuated in that cable length. Now here's another good tip. Buy yourself a wireless access point. Put your antenna as high as possible in the house. Maybe uh, in the top floor or in an attic. Maybe uh, there's a, a port or a hole in the attic. It does. The signal tends to get attenuated when it has to travel through too much wood or shingles or whatever. And in my, if you saw my other video, I have a port in my attic where I can place the antenna and there's like a plexiglass window and the signal is not attenuated as much and I get a good of a pretty good signal that way. So you can buy a router if your computer is not close to where the access point is because this antenna wire cannot be very long. So use a wireless router, put it near the antenna, and then run the cable down to your computer from the router to get your, your uh, connection there. Okay, another thing you can do, some wireless access points have a repeater mode where it receives the signal and that signal is converted to another wireless channel and sent back out because the outgoing signal is on a different frequency and is much stronger near your computer your computer can be down on the first floor or away from the access point and you'll get a much stronger signal in repeater mode and that of course you don't need to run a, a long ethernet cable down to your computer um, keep in mind that these are direction very directional because it's a high gain antenna it's going to seek out signals in one direction so you might have to point it different directions to get your signal one thing I found with Windows XP which I use when I uh, search for wireless networks and then I point it another direction and search again I find that it leaves other networks it found still in the list so what I have to do is go into control panel, networking, disable wireless networking, then re-enable it after I pointed it in another direction, and then scan for the networks and it'll pick up just those networks in that direction. That'll help you uh, pick out the networks you want to use. So that's about it. That's how to build your own wireless cantina. Oh, one quick last thing I did not mention. Because of the, the strain on this cable, I put some tape around here so the cable wouldn't get flexed too much and damage because it's, it's soldered here and you don't want to pull on it, change the length because it's pulling out. So put some packing tape or something here so it acts as a strain relief. There you go. That's your wireless cantenna. Thanks for watching.